Confused organizational politics or workplace politics or office politics with political skill, right? And political skill is not manipulative, right? Political skill is not about kissing ass. Mm -hmm. Political skill is not about bending over or folding, right? Just so you can be likable. In fact, I remember saying once to Ali and he was shocked that a lot of conflict avoiders struggle to get promoted into senior roles. Hey, conflict so, avoider, teacher, it is me, teacher. Right? Conflict yeah. avoider. So, there are four, but let me prove to you that it is not. I'll tell you the other three in whatever, and I won't cover this in depth. Let me prove to you that it's not about kissing ass. One of the four components of political skill is what's called apparent sincerity. What is apparent sincerity? All that is, is that you have to appear open, honest, transparent, and genuine without ultimate, uh, uh, without ulterior motives. And this is not Jerry saying, this idea of political skill has been studied, intense research that actually shows that people with great political skill get more pay, they're happy at work, they get promoted faster. Right, and I'll tell you, I'll show you the research on Wednesday. But all I'm gonna say is that there's four components of political skill, right? And it's not about kissing us. It's not about uh, uh, pleasing your bosses or bending over to everybody's will. It has nothing to do with that. Okay, now Lauren Bobat. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now me, the problem with my political skill, my political or aggression. Sk it's not aggressive. Political skill is not aggressive. It's not aggressive. The problem with my political skill is that I apply it after work. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm dealing with Kina Kinawan Mike, yeah. with Kina Omosh, with Kina Mika to Nasumbuan, that's where that's where my political skill applies. I love Unakutana Nawatu who are not willing to accept that uh, useless political skill. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry, uh, and I don't know, maybe we um it's a subject for another day or it's part of the course. Uh, um a lot of what we are speaking around is within growth within the same workplace right uh, promotion pay rise etc etc um, one key part i think also in in kenya is just getting the right jobs or getting new jobs right how am i uh, positioning myself for the next big thing at the next big tech multinational right and i know you spoke about the Green pastures as as not being an ideal, uh, you know, it might be an escapist solution which doesn't is not ideal. But uh, for us, and and having I don't know how long you've been away. I mean, we've struggled. It's been a struggle, especially now. Jobs are hard to come by, and and good paying jobs are that. And so everyone is trying to prep themselves for the next, the, the next, next opportunity. Next opportunity. And I know because where I work, I mean, I've seen, I talk to HR, there's jobs where the job is, you know, very, I would say, basic or it's not a very senior role, but you have, for, you have 400 applications. You wow. Know? Boom. Yeah. So yeah. how do you distinguish yourself as... Boom. as in a group of 400. Or 400. Yes. You uh, nailed that. You distinguish yourself in three ways. Right. And right. actually, these are my number one selling programs in Kenya for Kenyans. I just told you stories of people. Right. Number one is you have what I call a door busting resume. What is a door busting resume? The problem with most resumes that people have today is that they have resumes that speak to and only get them called for jobs that look like what they have today. Most people struggle to create a resume that pivots them to a promotion in their next role or to a job in a completely different industry or type of job. Why? Because they do not understand the power of actually infusing your brand and telling your brand story on your resume. So the first way you do that is you get what's called an ATS friendly resume that has your brand story infused in it. Number two, the second way you do that is what I call a magnetic or a brand affirming LinkedIn. Many of you are in tech, so you understand SEO. I can't tell you, like the other day I was showing somebody, I went onto my LinkedIn 
and, and I have a lot of friends that are project managers. I searched for project managers like a recruiter on my LinkedIn. None of my friends showed up. The people that showed up were like my third degree connection. Why? Because people have not learned how to optimize their resume and I always say their LinkedIn. And I always say this, if you have not learned the power of SEO optimization on your LinkedIn, one of three things is happening. Number one, you're not getting called all the time for new jobs, including in Kenya. Number by, by recruiters. Or number two, recruiters come to your page, they look at it and they say nothing. Or number three, they come to your LinkedIn, right? And the people that are coming to your LinkedIn, even if it's many pings, it's for jobs you don't want. It's not for your ideal jobs. That's the second thing you must master. And by the way, I work with professionals. So I'm talking at a professional level, right? And then the third piece that you must master is what you're talking about. This is my number one program. Like I, I get a client for it at least every week is what I call nail your interview. Because what happens in an interview, I'll give you some small mistakes people make. They're asked, tell me about yourself. Do you know what 99% of people do? They I'm list their worker. experience. They list their qualifications. They tell you their career story. Uh, right? <laughs> I can see that on your resume. I don't you need you to tell me you have four degrees or that you worked at this company doing these kind of jobs. Instead, you need to understand your unique value proposition. What is it that you bring to the table that everybody else with similar qualifications as you and experience as you does not bring to the table? And when you learn how to articulate your value proposition and then position yourself in an irresistible way where the person interviewing you starts to envision a future and then you connect for them that the only way to get to that future is through you. Not only do you get the offer, but you get it at the highest, uh, 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 at the top of the salary range. All right, Kim. That's how you do it. Your, your, your Zoom session, mm. I hope you already done it. Upon hour to uh, Kenya, yeah. what you to say? What you say, Papa? Yes, yeah. after year 14, you were yeah. 18. To, to, to deal, to deal now, 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 now,